Looking forward to be here discussing with you the future of our cities. So it's really a great pleasure. And uh, well, I was just watching these, these last panel and, and uh, was very excited. It's very, very nice to see how startups are starting shaping the future of our, our, our planet. And we are here today to discuss about smart cities and about cities and how technology is evolving and, well, trying to change the, the life quality, to enhance life quality in our cities. And before giving the word to my colleagues here, I would like just to put some grounds on, on smart cities. Every time every, uh, someone asks, what is a smart city? And I've been researching this for my, for my PhD research, and I found more than 200 definitions about smart cities. So it, it's quite complicated, right? Because maybe we try to make it this difficult, but it's not. I mean, when we go to the streets and when, when we talk to citizens, we don't need to expect that citizens understand about technology. We are here in a, probably the, the, the largest uh, tech event of the, of the year. We are talking about technology, but a smart city is not just about technology. I have my romanticizer, let's say, uh, definition of smart cities, and it's based in five big pillars. Smart cities are, yeah, technology was in the past, is, and will be a very important driver. But again, back to the point, it's just a driver. Last four years, I've traveled in more than 30 countries visiting projects of smart cities, and there is something that is really, really in common. Successful projects are people-centered. So it's about people. Cities are about people. Third pillar, it's about, if there is one goal, it's enhancing life quality. It's about quality of life. We can have a lot of secondary objectives in doing smart cities, but we need to be careful that the final result, the final output will be make the life better in our cities because we know that we are full of problems in the cities. Fourth one, well, we are talking a lot, mainly things the change of the century about the new, the new economies. So we have a creative economy, we have a sharing economy, we have a circular economy. This all is about our, the, the change in our society and the new cities that we are, we are shaping. So if you are doing a project or if you are thinking about a project in smart cities, you need to address your project under these perspectives. And last and not the least, and I've been, I have started talking about this, five, this fifth pillar, well, maybe four, five years ago, it's resilience. And then pandemic came and show, uh, showed us that, well, a lot of cities that were ranked as the, the smartest cities in the world, New York, London, Barcelona, they somehow failed during the pandemic to make things happen and, and to adapt to, 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 to mold to this new reality. So smart city is definitely about these five, uh, let's say, pillars. My romanticized definition for smart cities that, and I, I, I coined this when I was in Singapore, having experiences in Singapore, that was my feeling. And Singapore is always ranked one of these top smart cities. But the feeling I had there as a citizen is that smart cities are places that everything seems conspiring to make your life better. We don't know what's behind this magic, but you know that your life today is better than it was yesterday, and then you are very sure that life will be better in the future. I think that that is the main objective of us that are what we are calling the city makers. World was always made by makers. We had the shoes makers, we had the car makers, computer makers in the last revolution, and now we have the city makers. And I, I understand that we are all here city makers. So I will start with this very easy question. Uh, who are you and how you position yourself as a city maker? What are you doing in this process? So yeah, Angus, thank you very much to be here with us and let's start from you. Great, uh, Renato, thank you very much indeed. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Angus Hegarty, I have responsibility for what we call international markets uh, at Dell Technologies. So it's uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa, Middle East region, and also Asia Pacific, China and Latin America. Um, I think from our, my, my point of view, first of all, I'd like to congratulate everyone on a fantastic conference. This is actually my first physical international trip in almost two years. My last was actually here to Saudi at the end of uh, 2019, so delighted to be back. Um, and uh, Michael spoke uh, at the opening uh, uh, session 
yesterday morning, and he talked about what our company's focus is, which is around um, uh, helping people to grow and thrive and enabling uh, businesses through technology. Um, and on the topic you know, of digital cities, I think cities are made up of multiple elements and entities that form the city. So for us, it's about technology enabling healthcare a big focus clearly and access to healthcare and healthcare solutions. It's education, very important from an access point of view over the last couple of years. Of course, it's also about safety and it's also about sustainability as well too. And I think when I look at the vision for Saudi Arabia for 2030 and you look at it across um, uh, society, economy and nation, you know, the ability, and we're very proud as a technology company in Dell Technologies, to underpin and support that vision, which I think you can look at in each of those entities, or you can look at it at a digital city uh, uh, arena as well, too. Uh, we had the minister um, at our stand there uh, yesterday, and he asked me an interesting question about whether uh, Saudi Arabia was in the top 20, top 10. I actually said it's in the top five from our perspective, because when you look at the vision for 2030, uh, led through many en enablements through technology, including digital city. The goals and objective clearly position it in the top three, top five cities. So looking forward to the discussion we have ahead. Great, great. Yeah, I totally agree. And we used to say that smart city is not the final destination. Smart city is a journey. Absolutely. And some cities are having this journey in different speeds. And yeah, Joseph, I, I think that you have one of the well, most exciting position here and in the world, and that's why I'm in the world, in this region. I think this region is growing very fast, and you are ahead of one of the most, let's say, exciting projects in the region, Neon City, right? So, yeah, who is Joseph, and what is happening? I mean, what, how you are shaping the future? Well, first of all, uh, again, just an incredible event. I really, really have enjoyed it. It's great seeing people again and touching people again. Uh, you know, Neom is an incredible vision, an incredible project. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a passion. Uh, it's made up of a bunch of people who fundamentally believe that at the end of the day, we can create a new way of living uh, that involves technology, but quite frankly, is really about human-centric and is centered around doing it in a very responsible way uh, from an uh, environmental and conservation standpoint. I think when you break down kind of what my job is on a day-to-day -day basis, if you've gone to any city or traveled any day now, you realize you, you've got to be almost an attorney, a doctor, uh, an expert, uh, a paper handler, an administrator. Uh, the friction that we have introduced into everyday experiences is at an all-time high. And so when we think about what my job is at Neom is to remove that friction first off from those experiences, right? To, to make it easy uh, back in the days where you could get, go to an airport and get out of that airport under an hour, right? Get through the gates, things of that sort, to take the very simple things and really remove friction and make them easy to execute. And the second thing for us is to do so in a manner where technology is, is there, but you don't know it's there. It's, it's, it's working in the background. It's helping you do your life and do your job in easy fashion, where that's finding you a, a restaurant that you need to go to, or whether it's being able to arrange a vacation for your family, or whether it's traveling from point A to point B. It's being able to be able to have you have that experience without having technology be right front and center, kind of in your face. And I think the third thing that I've done a lot of talking about in this conference is, it's kind of my role to help restore trust um, in technology again. We, um, I think I've not done a great job, quite frankly, of exposing to people who's using their data, why we're using your data, and being very transparent on the value that's received. And if you look at the latest questions and trends, you'll see that there's a growing number of people that are saying, I simply don't want to play anymore. And that's very, very dangerous from us in standpoint of trying to create and drive innovation and entrepreneurialism. It's very hard to do if you don't have access to data. Well, you wait to the end. Joseph will tell his secret how he can make everything 24 <laughs> hours, right? Because yeah, <laughs> building a city and, and uh, using the normal time it should be a, a challenge. I, I, I can imagine. Okay, great. Well, my, I, I, I think I'm very lucky, guy. I've, I, I went to China. I moved to China and in 2005 and experienced all this growth in China along eight years. 
And I had also the experience to move to the region to see these, these, these challenges and, and, and to see this change. And I started my journey in the region exactly in, in Abu Dhabi. I, I was with the Abu Dhabi government for the Smart City Agenda, and I saw uh, all these, uh, well, uh, all this work that G42 is doing there in Abu Dhabi and, 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 and now growing in, in the region. So Talal, yeah. Thank tell you. us your tell us a little bit also about your challenges as a city maker in a, in a very thrilling region. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Renato. And again, echoing my uh, co-panelists, I really uh, appreciate the organizers giving me the opportunity to be here. But uh, what a great event uh, that you guys put together! So congratulations. And it is also similarly uh, my first official commercial travel since COVID. <laughs> so uh, very lucky to make this the first one. Um, you know, G42, as you mentioned, is a, is, a, is a technology powerhouse now here in the UAE, and, and we're looking increasingly on expanding beyond the UAE. But what we are is essentially a vertically integrated technology conglomerate that's based in Abu Dhabi with global ambitions and reach and with a very strong ecosystem of partners that we leverage uh, to support the delivery of value-added services. Um, and mainly centered around AI and cloud computing on a very general basis and with a mission to invent a better every day. But beyond the cliche part of that, I think you can see real life um, actions uh, demonstrating how we do that and how the digital infrastructure that we develop is, is leveraged in order to do that. Uh, genomics being one of them. Our G42 healthcare division is very um, uh, deep into whole genome sequencing and we're on the, on, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in route to, to mapping uh, 1.2 million UAE nationals uh, whole genome sequencing with the help of our friends from NVIDIA in terms of supercomputing and many other uh, technology providers, ONT, Illumina, and BGI. So that's an example of one area where, you know, having the muscle power that G42 bring and then the brain power in terms of the the, the, the uh, research capabilities that we have through an AI research institute um, can, can be coupled together and served through the cloud infrastructure that ties it all together. And that's where I sit today in the G42 cloud business where we are looking for ways to deliver that value to uh, customers and support the championing of digital transforma transformation across the globe. So when you look at smart cities specifically, it's one area that is ripe for uh, continued disruption and evolution in how you de deliver that type of value because everything typically was scattered, I think, with the pandemic, and you mentioned post-pandemic, I think that's kind of thrust us into the position where we're able to now take advantage of creating the value proposition that digitizing everything and having a central repository or a data lake could then yield in terms of value. So that's where we tend to focus. And um, what we are trying to do increasingly now in looking at other countries, including Saudi Arabia, where we're planning on establishing a presence and an office over here soon, is uh, take what we've built in terms of a model, in terms of that sovereign cloud architecture and digital infrastructure, and replicate it in different parts of the world with that bespoke type of offering, build, own, operate, transfer, in addition to bringing our ecosystem partners with us to support us on that journey. So that's kind of where we play in that mix. And, and the same thing, right? 24 hours, not enough to make everything. <laughs> they, they do call it G24-7 instead of G24-7 <laughs> <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> Great. And yeah, well, we, the next round of questions will be exactly the discussion about the foundational technologies and how this is important to create the basis for our cities. But before, uh, we, when we talk about technology, we, we see technology around us and we identify brands and, and, and technology that's easy, makes our lives easy. But there are some technologies that are really everywhere, but sometimes you even don't perceive this. Uh, we have this pandemic that has accelerated all the change and accelerated all this process of digitalization. And NVIDIA is a company that has been always there in our houses, in our companies, and I mean, in this fantastic, you know, visualization and, and, and trying to, to, to make image as real as possible, as much here, um, as possible. And yeah, I think that the, all these challenges and all these new technologies that we're going to be discussing, like Metaverse, huh, it's totally related to you, right? Yep. I, mean, I think that you are the one that takes care of everything in, out of the scenes. So a fantastic Hollywood movie happens because there is a great technology and team in, 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 in the back. So how is it? Who, who are you and what are you doing in this transforming yeah, so, our cities? Yeah, Renato, thank you. 
Ou obrigado em português. Like yeah, it's my... Uh, thank you very much. I'm Yab Zadefeld, responsible for the uh, EMEA region, that's Europe, Middle East and Africa. Um, we as a team, what we want to, 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 to accomplish is help you being uh, successful. And let me get a little bit into that. If I look at your daily life today, probably eight out of 10 times our technology is helping you. When you wake up, take your car, look at your mail, I can tell you that eight out of nine times our technology is underlying. We work with our partners to make them successful. Um, and, and, and what is really important, and, and I, I cannot emphasize that enough, and I've said here today by, by my colleagues, is that you need to start working together. If you want to make this successful, it's not only the technology that you buy, but it's the people. If you are able to work together from an industry perspective with uh, the government, together with education, if you have the ecosystem working, you can really do a, 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 a lot of work. Because I believe that the technologies are already there. Today, for example, any airport, you come in Saudi Arabia, um, they use our technology for crowd, um, you know, to, to understand crowds, uh, to validate passports, it's already used. So there's a lot of places where the technology is already used, but it's the people who are going to use it. It needs a behavioral change of everybody. And what I found out, countries who are successful are able to work together. And as I have said today also, the more easier it looks for an individual, the better they did the work. That is because then it's really complicated. If you're able to do it really good to implement the technology good, the perception of the individual is very good. And that, that is where we need to focus all on. That's where we need to spend a lot of time in educating the market how to work together. That's my view. Great, fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and again, we, we don't know the audience that are here with us, but for sure we have well city officers and we have tech companies. And, but at the end of the day, we ask ourselves, I mean, what, what the question of the, our panel, right? How technology is really helping us to solve our urban problems? We understand that, again, smart city is not just technology. We understand that probably we are doing our best to make our cities different, but what is, what is pushing this, this change is mindset, is the change of the society, is society that is evolving right. for a smarter society, harder than us trying to, to well, we are just respond to this. So our second round, I'd like to discuss about yeah, real technology. In your opinion, what are kind of cases, examples that you can bring us that you see really technology in a very high level changing and, and, and solving uh, uh, urban problems? Because most part of our problems are in the concept, right? I mean, we, we are not going to solve problems of uh, traffic, for example, mobility, just with electric cars. Electric cars are okay. But then, if you have a traffic jam with electric cars or non-electric cars, we still have a traffic jam. So we need really to, the, the matrix has changed. We need to evolve also in the way we, we, we solve the problem. So, yeah. Uh, your, your perspective, Angus, please. I, I, I think where you're going with that is that, you know, whether it's for an individual, a citizen, or whether it's for a business, it's very much focused now on the outcomes. It's focused on the experiences. And that's where I think all of us as technology companies have pivoted to, where the CIOs and the uh, C-suite are pivoting to, is how is technology enabling those outcomes? Um, there is a multitude of emerging technologies out there. You can go down to any of the stands and locations and see it's a multi-cloud world enabling a modern infrastructure. Um, it's um, a 5G mobile technology un unlocking. We talked here on the stage yesterday a lot about that. Um, it's also about cyber and cybersecurity. Uh, it's absolutely about IoT. And most certainly in the case of digital cities, it's also about d data analytics and AI and analyzing the data and driving those insights, whether they're for business outcomes or whether for changing experiences for citizens. Um, and these, along with others like digital twins, there was a good discussion here. I, I think you might have discussed digital twins yesterday when you were on stage, Joseph. You know, that's also a, a new way of replicating in the digital way a product a car, an airplane, and being able to work with it in that way to, uh, to innovate and develop. 
examples from my perspective, if I stand back and think about it, it's if a lot of work we're doing with uh, safe cities and sustainable cities, uh, both here in uh, uh, Saudi. Some of those are new cities, some of those are current cities that need to evolve, and different challenges for different cities at different points of, of, of evolution and, and growth. Um, and in there, you're looking at elements from traffic management. You mentioned the cars. It's not just that they be electric, so it's a greener city, but it's also, and that that city uses more renewable energies, but it's also that it's uh, management of the traffic. Um, it's, it's the elements around security. Uh, it's around the sustainability of those cities and all of the other elements and services around that city. Um, I was with the uh, Aviation Authority this morning with uh, His Excellency, and we were talking about the airports here in each of the cities and how you look at throughput through the airport, how you use AI and data analytics to enhance the experience from a user uh, of that particular service or area. So that's absolutely key. Healthcare is another fantastic example of where we've seen over the last two years, education would be another one, of where you've seen a transformation in the experiences and the services that are being delivered through technology. Uh, telemedicine, tele, uh, healthcare is absolutely critical and working with hospitals both here across the region and globally, it's also about how do you change that experience and outcome from the patient? How do you narrow the time from the a patient coming uh, with symptoms to detecting it to application of medicine? So driving business outcomes that say, well, can we narrow that time frame by 40%? In a hospital environment, can we have 30% more patients through the infrastructure we have in place using data, using analytics? Um, and can we have a third of the patients diagnosed away from the hospital network using the technology? So it's absolutely uh, a multi-year journey to your point, but I would emphasize finally a couple of points. It's business outcome led. You need to understand the outcomes you want to achieve for the citizens and for the business. You need to start with one element. If you try to digitalize a city and do all elements together, you need to pick areas, scale that out, ensure that the technology is a modern infrastructure in which you can build the applications and the requirements that are there and cybersecurity must be at every single aspect of the technology and the deployment that you do, but multi-year journey. Totally, totally agreed. And, and, and building on what you said, Joseph, you are in a position that you are the one helping to define the future of a new city. And I, I love your concept of cognitive cities, and we, we, it's the first time we talk about, we, we at RMA, we have developed the concept, we are calling the model Neuro Smart City, that I think Smart City is evolved from a very binary relation that was just sales, I, mean, I have a solution, you have a problem. Then we, we created this matrix that was working really well before the pandemic, when we changed the, what we, we had as constants and uh, changed it completely, we understood that cities are probably not a matrix, but they are neuro, right? The connections they have, they will happen, doesn't matter if you want or not. And if there is a problem, cities will find solutions itself, the ecosystem, cities are live organisms. So yeah, how, how do you bring this? How you see now in, in, a, in your perspective, sitting in a, in a place that you can see the big picture, you're connecting connect, uh, technologies to bring these outcome. How do you see? Yeah, so I think one is, is that there's a recognition that s there's three core fundamental capabilities that I think cities have to have, right? You, you fundamentally have to have the ability to connect things. That means when you go into a, a restaurant or you're outside going apart, you can't be looking for connectivity and trying to figure out where do I get it from, right? So we, you got to create an environment we call digital air. The second thing is, is you, you have to have compute capacity. That means when all these great apps, you can't go to your phone and have that thing keep spinning to figure out what's, what's, what's going on, right? And then the third thing is you have, to, you have the ability to contextualize, meaning that when you get all that data, it's got to tell you something that makes you change your behavior, that gives you insight, right? It's either going to help you get to a place faster or it's going to get you there on an ulterior road, but it has, to, it has to generate value. And so when you think about where we've done, what we've focused on, technologies like IoT as an example, for like smart parking, smart lighting, or machine vision technologies, where we're looking at cameras to see what's, what's happening uh, in, in terms of traffic patterns and what's going on there, or even AI. All the technologies today have been focused on real time. You hear that word almost used synonymously. You know, we gotta get to real time, we gotta get to real time. What did COVID teach us? 
COVID taught us that real time is too late. The damage is already done. And so what that means is, is that if you want to go beyond real time and you want to get to cognitive, you want to get to predictive, proactive, the first thing you got to do is realize silos or isolation is the worst enemy of progress. What we've done in smart cities, we create these solutions, but we create them in silos, right? So you, go to, you can see a, a POC happening there, or a POC happening there, and you don't have the ability to exchange information. So you don't have an ability to actually create a system. And so that silo created major, major issues. The second thing is, is when we thought about connectivity in terms of real time, we always focused on, do you have certain features of functionality, what the speeds, what the feeds? But that's not it. It's about the experience. How many of you have been on a conference call lately in the, our new digital world? The number one word to, that you talk about is, are you on mute? <laughs> you must say that about a thousand times. That's not the experience. I talked earlier about my, my uh, nephew, Malcolm, right? You watch a six-year-old kid trying to learn, you know, tele-education, trying to keep them occupied in that, in that moment. These things are, are falling quite short. And so what we have to do is turn that on its head and realize that it is about the experience. And so we talk about technologies like metaverse technologies, blending the virtual with the real and gamification and all those types of things coming in. But when you really ultimately get down to it, cities were built today around assets. They were built today around buildings, around roads, around cars. And what we're really seeing is the true cities of the future, the cognitive cities, that model has to be turned on its head. It's gotta be built around you, citizens, you as a human, as a person. And that by definition requires us to have a completely new architecture that's built around sharing of information and the frictionless flow so that we can ultimately create the new experiences that we desire. Great, and, and understanding that we are here in the Middle East talking about the future of the Middle East, but we came from different perspectives, different cultures and different realities, right? Talal, I think you are the only one among us that you are local, right? So for you, uh, one of the topics that we discuss in the, in the neuro uh, model is that DNA of the city and DNA of the region should come first before we are solution providers and people are always asking for use cases, but then, I mean, it just makes sense if it makes sense to the, to the local reality. So yeah, how, how do you frame these? I mean, solutions yeah. for the, the technology, bringing solutions for cities, but under this cultural perspective, how, how do you see this? Yeah, it's very interesting because, you know, growing up in Abu Dhabi and, and looking at what other countries had, they, you know, it was always, there was this kind of imbalance, right, in terms of what we aspired to have. And then we accelerated very quickly, and I see the same thing happening here with the 2030 vision in the kingdom. I think it's incredible to see technology adoption. But to Joseph's point, I think that the way it's been built has had incremental progress at best in many places in the world because of the um, uh, silos the, uh, as you defined them. And, the na and naturally, with the silos, you don't get the benefit of optimization and, and a, a repository of like a, a data lake that is consistent amongst the many different facets of society that would allow you to reap the benefits of that. And so that's where I think the type of infrastructure we are building will help. Now with Neom, you have the luxury of starting from scratch, which is an, it's an, an immense luxury not to be understated, sure right? <laughs> but um, in many other places, you see something working and you're happy with an incremental step change. The problem is that uh, arguably Neom will probably be much more advanced in a much shorter period of time than the ones that are going with that incremental because they are willing to take on so much more, I wouldn't call it risk, but uh, you know, uh, ambition in terms of what, how they design things that are counterintuitive. It's like leapfrogging in, in, in certain countries when it had the telecommunication uh, error. You wouldn't want to put landlines where you can get a cell phone if you're able to get the cost structure in place to where people can then Im immediately have cell phones. So we're kind of in that kind of paradigm shift today. And I think what we are looking at as, as, as a company is how do we enable that quantum leap into the future by disrupting what's already pretty advanced because you don't want to be left behind. And so that's where I think the cloud infrastructure, the scalability of it, and then the fact that if those siloed things, the motivation behind having siloed information was mainly data uh, sovereignty and data privacy. Mm -hmm. And so if we're talking about healthcare, financial institutions, sensitive government business, 
they're worried about their data being you know, uh, uh, sent anywhere outside of the sovereign, sovereignty of the country. So the cloud infrastructure, similar to ours, that allows for that data sovereignty, that then allows other companies from the ecosystem to plug into that to force multiply what we're doing, is a solution that I think will help us make that quantum leap and enable smart cities uh, even in existing countries that are uh, already advanced the way they are. Great, yeah. I don't know if they, they told you, but we have a two-hour panel. But it will be half an hour here, and then we are going to be <laughs> keeping talking uh, outside. So we are just to wrap, I think that you have now the very important, very important uh, uh, role here to wrap up everything. And yep, I think that uh, you can do this this leap, this jump to the close future. We are seeing what is happening, all these hypes, metaverse, and, and, and well, we see that the future is very exciting. So how do you see technologies and the way you are working technology uh, that, that's to come? What, what is tomorrow? What is to come? How do you see this? And we have two minutes to wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're asking me a quite interesting question. Um, but let me, let me, let me uh, I think in the future, what would be very important is that we understand how, what, what impact our technology can have. And one of the things we as NVIDIA are working on is we call it Metaverse. And Metaverse is basically you create a digital environment and where you combine, where we are building a platform, yeah, and in a digital environment, you're able to combine AI, data, VR, all the technologies and communicate together. Um, as an example, uh, the best example, if you want to know, is BMW, what we did with BMW. We created a, a factory, a digital twin, in a digital environment. And in that factory, they programmed, in, a, you know, in, in this platform, they programmed a complete factory. And I, I think that is going to be, uh, uh, on top of what, everything we do, but that's going to be a, a game changer. And we're talking to a city in Europe who is going to build a complete digital city and is going to see what the technology can do to help that city. And those are things which really, because then you can see what happens with traffic, what happens with people mo moving around, but also how the payment systems work and everything else, you know, my previous colleagues talked about. Yep, yep. And, and that is something we really uh, want to focus on. And, and, and not only that, it's also understanding the platforms how you communicate with each other how do you how how does a financial platform evolve how, how you know how do you how do you manage crowds how do you do um, um, uh, security those are kind of things you, you need to help the community we need to help our partners to do that consistent understandable in a language which is easy to speak and uh, from, from my point of view um, a metaverse where we're going that where we are going to put the real world and the digital world together, that's going to help in solving a lot of problems before they even uh, come, in my view. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much. I think that we did a very good job. We talk about the past, present, and future of our <laughs> cities in just half an hour. We still have more to talk a lot. We could stay here the whole day. So if you are curious about what's happening, what's to come in our cities, feel free to to talk to these mates, they really know what's happening. Thank you very much. Thank Hope you. to meet you in, in the future projects around the world and around the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.